You've probably heard before that inflammation is the root of all disease. There's definitely something to this. Inflammation is heavily involved in all chronic disease, including heart disease and cancer. This is usually followed by all kinds of advice about blueberries, salmon, and vitamin C, or maybe some meditation and similar mumbo jumbo. And make sure you tell her that there's loads of fat in crisps. It's irrelevant, but it is at least true. <laughs> now, off you go. I've got to go on the one show in a minute to talk about superfoods, and I haven't made one up yet. I dare to say it's white veal. You're on. Many of these dietary and health practices can have benefits, but do they really treat the root cause? Where does inflammation really come from, and more importantly, what can we do about it? Well, there are many complicated and confusing mechanisms in the body related to inflammation. At its heart, inflammation is simply swelling. That is, the holding of excessive water by the cell. When your whole system is inflamed, this constricts blood vessels and impedes the flow of oxygen to the body. It also makes it impossible for large immune bodies like macrophages to move freely through the body. This is ultimately what causes gangrene to develop in type 2 diabetic patients, which then leads to amputation. These poor people are getting hypothermia at room temperature due to the constriction of their blood vessels and the inability of the immune system to properly defend the body from intrusion. What we really need is the cause. If you dig around long enough in old medical textbooks, you'll eventually come across a very important line of text explaining that high blood pressure is an insulin-dependent phenomenon. That is, without high insulin you can't have high blood pressure. This is because insulin signals the kidney to hold on to electrolytes, and this in turn causes the body to hold on to water. And it can still work quite well at the kidney level. And one of the jobs of uh, insulin at the kidney level is to actually hold on to sodium. So that's actually a, a much more important factor for increasing the sodium in your body and causing high blood pressure than is the amount of sodium that you consume. If you consume a, a modicum of sodium but have very high insulin levels, your body's going to try very hard to hold on to all of that sodium. You can, on the other hand, consume a whole lot of sodium but have very good low insulin levels and any excess sodium that can, you consume will just come out in your urine. It would be great if we could just eat some blueberries every day and be healthy, and it might help a little if you do. I have some bilberry powder myself every day, pretty tasty and it has much more polyphenols than blueberries do. Yet the real solution is to get that swelling down. Diet will help here, especially cutting down wheat and other carbs, especially the processed ones. This is slow going though, and it often takes months or years to get even small improvements, even assuming you can stick to the diet. The quickest way is through fasting. Just 24 hours of fasting will reduce your insulin to about 40% of what it was when you started. The time you are fasting is really the only time you lose fat from the body, even when trying to lose it from dieting. This is because this is the only time insulin is lowered enough to let the fat out of the fat cells. If you're just eating a bunch of carbs all day and quote unquote dieting, then you're not possibly burning any fat at that time because you're just going to burn those carbs up and when the carbs run out, you'll burn muscle up. That's why you lose lean tissue during quote unquote diets. And it's a significant amount of the weight that you lose when dieting. It's from one quarter to one third of the total weight lost is lean tissue. And that's not to say diet is unimportant. Diet can have great benefits too, especially when combined with fasting. It's just that your body is designed to fast. And if you're not fasting, it's difficult or impossible to be optimally healthy. I already mentioned how swelling can cause problems for the immune system but it also has another crucial effect on the body. When blood vessels are constricted from swelling, it makes it hard to get oxygen to your cells. This puts them into a hypoxic state, which simply means without oxygen. To explain why this is bad, I'm going to have to talk about the Krebs cycle again. You're very good to see you again, old friend. 
Surprising as it may be, the ultimate fuel your body uses to produce energy is vinegar. Your body chops up fat and glucose into vinegar, and then the Krebs cycle starts, which burns oxygen and vinegar to produce water, CO2, and ATP. ATP is chemical electric energy stored in the mitochondria, and it's used for movement and other chemical reactions. There's two ways you can get to this point. The first and most common is beta oxidation, the burning of fat. This accounts for about 70% of your body's energy production. It also produces the fewest byproducts. This is why, in spite of the endless fuds to the contrary, this is the body's preferred means of creating ATP. This is a complicated process, and as energy demands go up, or as mitochondrial availability goes down, then more and more energy is produced through the burning of glucose, or glycolization using oxidative phosphorylation. This process is faster than fat burning, but it produces more byproducts, in particular ROS, or reactive oxygen species. This combines with PUFAs like linoleic acid to create mutagenic chemicals that alter the DNA of the cell nucleus and the mitochondrial DNA. The nuclear DNA has two copies of DNA and robust mechanisms of self-repair, but the mitochondrial DNA only has one copy and cannot repair itself very well, so it's much more vulnerable to this kind of damage. This damages the mitochondria and impairs energy production in the cell. This also initiates a vicious cycle because carb burning is quicker than fat burning. So when there's fewer working mitochondria in the cell, you're going to burn more and more carbs and cause more and more reactive oxygen species to be developed. And this causes more and more damage to the cell over time. You may have noticed so far that we've been using oxygen for all of our energy production needs. But when the cell is hypoxic, there's no oxygen to use. And that's where the real problems appear. Take your helmet off! I'll die! oxygen out here! Hey, oxygen's for losers! Come on! I need oxygen! You don't need anything, King! You're the King! While the Krebs cycle burns vinegar to produce water and energy, cells can also make energy in a much less efficient way called fermentation. It's also known as the Warburg effect. This has many more byproducts. In fact, so many byproducts that this is how the most basic organisms create amino acids, proteins. When you make yogurt, that's why you wind up with about 25% more protein than you started with in just the raw milk. It also enriches the B vitamins in a similar manner. It sounds great, but unlike a single cell organism, your cells don't know what to do with all this extra material. Unless they're cancer cells, that is, in which case they can use that extra material to make more and more cells. All these byproducts from burning carbohydrate can have a disastrous effect on the DNA of your nucleus and mitochondria over time, and now all this extra material is just lying around waiting for use. And this seems to be the basis for the cause of cancer. These ROS from burning carbs erode the nuclear and mitochondrial DNA over time, this causes mutations, and it also destroys the fat burning ability of the cells, which forces it into this mode of creating lots of reactive oxygen species. This forces more and more carb burning and fuels more and more mutation over time. If the mitochondria are defective, they can't use ketone bodies for energy. Only normal cells with normal mitochondria can use the ketone bodies for energy. So when people say cancer cells can burn ketone bodies, no, they can't then they would have to argue against all of the structural defects that I just showed you on the structure function in the mitochondria. Mitochondria of cancer cells cannot burn ketones. As a matter of fact, ketones are absolutely toxic to many cancer cells. Not only does this drive cancer, but heart disease is also driven by inflammation, which in turn is driven by high insulin. While people often think of fasting as a way to lose weight, and losing weight as a way to fight disease, one of the best effects of fasting is quickly decreasing insulin which can help prevent these issues from developing. I started fasting not to lose weight so much as to lower my blood pressure, which couldn't be controlled even on three different medications. 
I was shocked to see that after doing a 72 to 96 hour fast every week for a month, my blood pressure had gone from uncontrollable to perfect. Not only that, but I was still overweight, but somehow feeling great. It wasn't losing the fat that changed things, it was lowering the insulin. I only realized that much later after lots of research. You might think the solution is to exercise, but while exercise has many benefits, it also drives the process of carb burning and hypoxia, especially when you do it excessively. Walking, weightlifting, and interval training will not promote much carbohydrate metabolism or hypoxia, while distance running can have quite an impact, especially when you're really pushing your performance. Another thing that can help is phototherapy with red light and near-infrared. This will help relieve hypoxia by releasing nitric oxide which opens up the blood vessels. This allows the mitochondria to resume oxidative phosphorylation and beta oxidation and avoid the harmful fermentation effects. Sadly your brain is very vulnerable in this regard because free fatty acids cannot penetrate the blood brain barrier. This means that for most people today your brain cells only burn glucose and are constantly being exposed to large amounts of reactive oxygen species. This is the root of dementia, which is often described today as type 3 diabetes, and is essentially a disease of insulin resistance of the brain cells. When you fast, you quickly go into ketosis, and this relieves the brain of this burden. It also allows the brain cells to activate their repair mechanisms such as autophagy and DNA repair using sirtuins. I feel reborn. I'm like a phoenix rising from Arizona. Thankfully, you don't have to constantly fast to get these benefits. If you can just throw the switch into ketosis and DNA repair mode just once in a while, you can help prevent or even reverse a great deal of disease. Even doing just a single 72-hour fast once a year will have a surprisingly positive effect on your health.